I make card deals with the Magic 8-Ball. So although my passion is classic cars and I've been restoring them since a teenager and I've always been the person you call up and I'm the one who says, don't buy a new car. You should never buy a new car, never buy a new car. And I'm still that person. But in my early 20s, I was like, I've got to talk from experience. If I'm going to keep telling, I can't just work on other people's word. I got to know what's so bad or so good or whatever about new cars. So I'm like, I'm going to go sell new cars for like a few months. How hard could it be? I'm thinking, what car could I sell without losing my soul? And I thought, Honda. They're a great car. They're at an affordable level. They, you know, they're reliable. They hold their value pretty well. I wouldn't be shameful for putting somebody in the seat of a Civic or an Accord or whatever. I might be sad to put them in a Passport, which was just a re a rebadged Isuzu Rodeo. I did feel bad about that, but everything else fine. So I went in, got a job, went to Ross Dress for Less and got some new ties, some dreadful ties and not a big fan of ties, but I did it. And I went through the training and I'm like, well, this isn't too bad. I mean, maybe it is a service to sell people new cars because most people, you know, they're not like me or a lot of car enthusiasts where they're, you know, they can just open the hood and change, change the oil or anything. You know, they, to them, it's just something you get in your drive and you want to take care of and the dealer take care of it and it's just an appliance. So I can kind of understand that. And the kind of people came in, but I got bored really fast. I think I became the number one, two salesman in the second month because I wasn't a jerk and I didn't care. And as time went on, I cared less. And the less I cared, the more cars I sold. And I'm like, maybe this is the secret to life. I just won't care about anything. So on my desk, things started appearing first was the magic eight ball. People would come up and people are grinding you. And this was the beginning of like internet car sales. People were just starting to get invoice, to you know, I know what invoice is because I found it on the interwebs. And they come in and start hammering you. And I'm like, I don't have to deal with this. So they would come in with, if you, they walked in with a stack of papers that was obviously printed from the internet, out came the magic eight ball. And they would ask questions, legitimate deal questions. And that we'd fill out the four square and they're like, okay, you know, do you think you can do this? Signs point to no. And I would say whatever it showed. If it was signs point to yes, it would be the same. I'd be like, signs point to yes, great. But they'd be kind of like, are you actually, are we doing a deal through a magic eight ball? And I'd put it down. And if they asked another question that I was, couldn't be bothered with, outlook unlikely. And I made card deals with the magic eight ball. I'm like, how can I make this even more random? And for Christmas, I think, I got a Darth Vader bank and you pushed a button on it or you put a coin in it and it would go, impressive, most impressive, but you're not a Jedi yet. And his th so if somebody said something, I would just, he'd be sitting at my desk and I would just go bang. And he would go, the lightsaber would come up and he'd start talking and they're like, what's going on? And they're looking for the sales manager, the assistant sales manager. And the sales manager's name was Chemo and he was, a delight, like the nicest guy. He'd been selling cars for years and we would have talks in between sales all the time. Like after we got to know each other, he knew I was doing, and I was selling plenty of cars. He let me do whatever I wanted. I could have filled the drawers up with jelly beans and jacks and he wouldn't have cared. So it just became a, a, like a never ending succession of weird things. And I thought like once I got the gist of it. And once I finally started feeling my soul being sucked from my body, I was like, okay, because they would have sales meetings at the beginning of the day and the general manager would walk in with hundred dollar bills pinned to his jacket. And he goes, guess who I am? I'm somebody looking for a car. Take this money off of me. He's like, you gotta just take it off of me. I'm a sucker. And like just demeaning any possible client. Like all they were supposed to do represented to them was cash. The majority of these salesmen were like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think the, working with the people selling cars, I felt good about, but it was the time in between. Cause you're working 10 hour days, six days a week. And it's a horrible schedule. 
I was just exhausted. I'm like, after a few months, I'm like, I, I see anybody could do this for years. And they would come up with weird ways to pass the time, like really weird ways. The most humorous one I remember was one of the, we, they always kind of put one on the floor, like a Honda Accord EX, and they'd put all the crap on it from the parts department. And they'd mark it up a bunch. So the window sticker had one window sticker, then it was all the add-ons. And it was kind of like a way of selling an over 30, but back then over $30,000 Accord, which you can do now in a heartbeat. But back then that was like, you were adding $5,000 in add-ons, you know, the liners for the fenders and all this junk. And one of the salesmen who was the number one salesman, he's like, yeah, I can sell this. I'll sell this today. Cause I was like, who's gonna buy this thing? It's ridiculous. I'm thinking like a car guy. I'm like, I could do all this work for half of it or whatever. I'm like, that's insane. He goes, I'll, I'll sell this today. I'm like, you're on. And a lot of, there was a lot of betting going on. People would bet about everything. So I'm like, and I'm not a gambling person, but I had to get a piece of that. I'm like, all right. So people came in and uh, he shows them the car and, and they leave and he's very good, very good at what he does. And uh, he's all, I'm gonna up the ante. He goes, you tell me what this is worth if I sell this car like this. And I'm like, what are you, what are you doing? Because you had to take turns. Each person that came to the door, the salesman would take turns to get him. And uh, it was his turn again. And this couple come in and he talks to him and they're like, we're looking for a four-door Honda Accord. He's like, I've got the car for you and we just finished it for you. Let me show you. It's right here in the showroom. We don't put the ordinary cars in the showroom. Like he starts his spiel, like making it the most special thing around. Then he walks around it and he goes, now this has a lot of special features and I'm gonna point them out to you right now. It's got chemo turn signals and this is fitted with Fakara tires. And he names off the names of every salesman in the dealership associated with some part of the car. It's like, those are Fredrickson uh, windshield wipers. And they're like, oh, is that, is that really what it is? Does the whole car like that? And Every salesman's just staring at him as he's as a person's waiting for their name to be called out because he's doing it loud enough that everybody can hear it in the showroom. And they are enthralled and they buy the car. Full boat. And they got the warranty and everything in the back end. And that he won a bunch of money that day. But apparently they got the Fakara tires. I don't know where they replaced them, but uh, you know, that was extra value there. That was maybe six months of that. And it was soul sucking. If you, a car guy and, and people would come in and I'll never forget one of them was like, that we had to move, you have to move so many cars a month. That's why it's an excellent idea to go into a car dealership the last day of the month. And every car guy, dealership guy will tell you, no, that's not true, that's not true. Totally true. They have to make their quota. If they haven't made their quota, they need to move some cars. You walk in, last day of the month, two hours before they close so that they're panicking, you can get anything you want there. As long as it's on the floor, you can get anything you want. And people would do that. They would walk in and grab these things. This one woman came in and she couldn't afford. Like they tell you, here's how much I make a month. And here's my like current, you know, here's what, uh, I've got this in rent and whatever. Like you're supposed to walk them through the financials of it. And I'm like, you can't afford a new car. You can't afford a $15,000 to $20,000 car. You need a used car. And we were at the end of the month and they're like, you need to sell four more cars today. I'm like, I don't care. Like this person needs to go buy $7,000 Honda Civic that's sitting out there that will get them to and from work and that's all they need it for. They don't need that. They can't afford that. Oh no, I'll take care of this deal. I'm like, no, I'm not giving you the deal. And it went from assistant sales manager to the sales manager and Kimo's like, you gotta hand this over and we need to close this. I'm like, she doesn't need the car. I went back to my desk and Kimo was like, gonna come over and take over and I just point blank told her, I said, you can't afford this car. And I don't know if she thought it was some kind of weird sales ploy or something, but I was being, I was pleading with her. I'm like, you need a used car that you know is certified, everything's fine and it's a dynamite car and that's what you need. It's got some mileage on it but it'll serve you well for what you're doing. You've got kids and payments and credit cards. Chemo comes over, sells her new car. And that was kind of the final straw. I'm like, I can't do this to people. And that's, if that's what this business is about, and it is, it's about moving new cars. So I learned a lot and I've passed that on to a lot of friends and family over the years, you know, whether or not to buy a new car and if they are buying a new car, 
everything I learned. Now, some of it might be outdated by now, but car sales have been the same for 100 years. So would I recommend buying a new car? Never. Premier Financial Services has been a sponsor of VinWiki for the last four years, and we can't thank them enough for their support, and we love them for that, but also because their Simple Lease truly is a tremendous product in the world of exotic car financing. They allow you to minimize your payment, minimize your down payment, take all the tax advantages that are available for a lease, while still giving you the ability to move in and out of cars and accumulate equity. So they structure it in a very unique way that's hugely advantageous, gives you a lot more buying power, and their customer service is absolutely incredible. So we love Mitch and their team for their continued support of the channel. We thank them for that, but please visit them at the link in the description below and find out how easy it is to buy your dream car through Premier Financial Services.